Sharp Short Stories Norman, Pino and Fred's Road Trip Norman Clamsey, Pino Di Stampo and Fred Siliax were in Texas, USA to film their latest TV show. They would travel to different countries, cook delicious food and do silly things like jump into swimming pools with all their clothes on. They would argue about which country made the best food, who the best chef was, who wore the best clothes. But deep down, they were all good friends. Yes, they were good friends, but they had big egos, and big egos can cause big problems. So they were in Texas, home of country music and cowboys, where people drank beer and ate burgers, fries and steaks. On the luxury coach the producer had hired to drive them round, Norman and Pino were having an argument. Where have we come to America? The food here is rubbish, said Pino. How can you say that? You can't just say all the food in this massive continent is rubbish, said Norman. Yes, I can say that. It's just burgers and fries and burgers and fries and maybe a steak and fries. Rubbish. There's loads more stuff than that. Really? How many days we been here? What have we eaten? Norman thought to himself. What had they eaten? Burgers and fries and burgers and fries and maybe a steak and fries. He was now in a pickle. He thought to himself that Pino might be right about the food in America, but he could never, ever let Pino think he was right about anything. Fine then, let's make a bet. I bet you I can find and cook some of the best food you've ever eaten while we're here in Texas by the end of the day, said Norman. American food, said Pino. American food. What do you bet? Your Rolex. My Rolex. Ah, okay, so you think I'm right. Okay, no problem, we don't need to bet. Norman was really in a pickle. Fred was there watching, so we couldn't get out of it. No, fine, let's bet my Rolex. What if I win? What if I find and cook some amazing American food by the end of the day? What do I win? You can have my Ferrari. Your Ferrari. Seriously, which one? The yellow one. Done! Fred, you need to be the judge. You taste the amazing American food I'm going to make. If it's amazing, which it will be, I get Pino's Ferrari. If it's rubbish, which it won't be, Pino gets my Rolex. Deal? That suits me, guys. I'm looking forward to seeing this. In fact, maybe we should film this for the show, said Fred. Norman and Pino agreed. They called the producer, set up the cameras and repeated the same conversation word for word. Later that day, Norman, Pino and Fred were sitting in a diner by the highway drinking coffee. Norman noticed a very attractive lady who seemed to be looking at him. He stood up, pushed up his quiff and strolled over to where she was sitting. Hey, I'm Norman, he said. I know who you are said the woman. I just love watching your shows. Thanks very much. Which uh, shows do you like in particular? Oh gosh, I don't know the names. What's that one where you cuss and holler at all the people who can't cook? Norman thought to himself that that described pretty much all of his shows. Kitchen Nightmares? Oh yeah, that's the one. Kitchen Nightmares. What y'all doing in Texas anyhow? Well, maybe you can help me. See that little guy over there? The bald one or the really good looking guy? Good looking? He's not good look. Yeah, him anyway. Not the bald guy. What about him? Well, he thinks all the food in America is rubbish. What? We got the best burgers in the world here. So anyway, I need to prove to him that he's wrong. I need to prove that this beautiful country and the beautiful people that live here produce some wonderful food. We sure do, Gordon. Norman. My name's Norman. Well, of course it is. So, can you help me? 
How about we go for dinner tonight and we can discuss some dishes I can knock up? With your help, of course. I don't know, Norman. I'm married. I don't know what y'all do in England, but here in Texas, you can't just up and go for dinner with any old handsome stranger who rides into town. Come on. I'm sure your husband wouldn't mind. I mean, all I'm asking is for some advice on what Texan food to cook and for dinner with a beautiful person. If that's wrong, I don't want to be right. Well, I suppose if you put it like that, meet me here after I finish my shift, say around seven. I'll be here, darling. After heading back to the luxury coach, Norman informed Pino and Fred he wouldn't be joining them for dinner. He said he couldn't join them for dinner because he had a hot date. After an afternoon nap, Norman got ready and arrived at the diner half an hour late. Treat him mean, keep him keen, as he liked to say. The lady was sitting in a booth, checking her lipstick. Hey darling, how you doing beautiful? Well aren't you just a charmer? Remember now, this is a business meeting. Absolutely. Now, what's good for dinner here? Well, I would say... Suddenly, the lady's face dropped in horror. She seemed to be looking at something behind Norman. She stood up, turned and sprinted out of the restaurant. Clamsy, you're going to pay. Norman stood up and looked behind him. A huge muscle-bound man with a trucker's cap and lumberjack shirt was marching towards him. You've been talking to my wife, Clamsy, behind my back. Now you're going to die. Norman was terrified. The man was getting closer. Everyone in the restaurant was staring at him. What was he going to do? He built a reputation as a no-nonsense hard man. He couldn't run away, could he? He could, and he did. Two hours later, Pino's phone was ringing. Pronto. Pino, it's me. Who? Norman. Norman, where you been? I need you to pick me up. I'm lost. Where? I don't know. That's why I'm lost. Okay, calm, eh? Turn on your location on your phone and send me the screenshot. I show the driver, okay? Okay, thanks, buddy. After an hour of driving in the dark through Wild West-style fields with nothing but huge orange boulders and green cactus around them, the luxury coach stopped. Pino and Fred got out their phones and switched the torches on. They searched the area but found no sign of Norman until they heard something rustling. Pino! Fred! Norman! Where are you? said Fred. Is it just you guys here? Yes, Norman. It's just me and Pino. You sure? Yes, I am sure. Where are you? I'm up here. Pino and Fred looked up to see Norman sitting on the branch of a tree. Norman! What you doing up there, you crazy guy? said Pino. I'm hiding. Hiding? From who? I'll tell you later. Now help me down. It's too high for me to jump. Fred went to help him. Pino stopped him. Norman. Remember our bet? What? What are you talking about? Help me down. In a minute. Remember our bet? Yeah? So? So you're lost. I get your Rolex. Agreed? Pino? I'm stuck in a tree. Help me down. Of course, mate. Just throw me your Rolex first. Glossary. In a pickle, in a difficult situation. Diner. A type of American restaurant. Highway. American word for motorway. Holler. Shout. No nonsense, tough and honest. Comprehension questions. 1. Why were Norman, Pino and Fred in Texas? 2. What bet did Norman and Pino make? 3. Who did Norman arrange to meet in the evening? 4. Why was the man in the diner angry? 5. What did Pino make Norman do before helping him? Language and structure. 1. 
Can you identify any foreshadowing used in the first paragraph? 2. Look at this sentence. It's just burgers and fries and burgers and fries and maybe a steak and fries. What does the repetition suggest about Pino's attitude to American food? 3. What does the dialogue suggest about Norman's character? 4. What's the turning point in the story? If you like Norman, Pino and Fred's road trip, read Gordon Ramsay's Playing With Fire.